what's up everybody it's your boy Prof and we are back in another tier zoo video this is the deep sea meta okay the only thing i know about the deep sea like the deepest parts of the sea is that the pressure is too much so everything that lives down there is fucked actually fucked like you know like pressure deep sea animals fisted full fully I know about that, that uh, fish that has like funky teeth and has a little lantern on top of it that attracts other fish that go inside its mouth and goes hur, hur. That's about the only animal I know about in the deep sea, so let, let's see what This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club Dollar Shave Club? What? Damn Hagfish? Oi Shark fled? Wait, what the fuck happened there? The different servers in this game all have the same basic mechanics and gameplay. All of the same stats are important for every build, and all of the same build types can generally be hey, found cute in the kitty. Certain stats are important for every build, and all of the same- Hey, look at this cute fuck on the top right. Build types can generally be found in most servers. With the exception of the Deep Sea. The Deep Sea, or Abyssal Server, has by far the most unorthodox, unintuitive, and unforgiving meta in the entire game. Sure, some other servers may have an extremely weird day-night cycle, or constant damage dealt by the overworld, or a really unbalanced meta where how good your build is gets defined by how well it can play around the top build. But nothing comes close to how different the Abyssal Server is. It's so different that I actually can't even make a traditional tier list for it. Why? YouTube, I don't feel well, so because good. nobody knows what the meta really looks like <laughs> down there. While data miners have managed to collect a few Twitch clips and screenshots, talk, for the so most good. part, the Abyss is still a mystery. And this is because it's the only server in the game that's region locked. The pressure setting on this server is so high that it will easily one-shot any player trying to get into the Abyss. Conversely, the only way the Abyssal player base can survive there is by specking into extremely high internal pressure to counter it. But that means if they try to leave they explode. Although there's not really any way to make a tier list for the Abyss, I can still discuss the strategies that are popular in the meta, and which abilities give you the best chance of success. You can pretty much just forget that the stealth stat even exists. There's no reason to waste any points on camouflage because there's no light down there. This is why every player there is just pale. Aesthetics, palette swaps, camouflage, all total wastes of evolution points. Now, when I said there's no light, that isn't entirely true. There's no ambient light, but perhaps one of the most important abilities to learn how to Ooh, use is bioluminescence. Fuck? Over 90% of the player base uses this move, so mastering it is key to carving out a niche for yourself. One of the most common mistakes new players make is assuming that the best use of bioluminescence is to see. <laughs> Look at these motherfuckers' no eyes. Mistake, trying to That's use bioluminescence cool. as a flashlight <laughs> in order to spot other players That's pretty is cool. easily the worst use of this ability. Oh, well, bioluminescence I mean, won't help you find cool. other players, but it will help other players find you. Oof. And so you need to be very careful about how you use this ability. Otherwise, you might end up giving your position away to an enemy player. The best uses for this ability are to communicate and to bait. Communication is pretty self-explanatory. You can use bioluminescence to talk to other players, signaling danger or finding other players to party up with. But uh, perhaps the more infamous use of bioluminescence, bioluminescence is as bait. Both viperfish and anglerfish are both prime examples. Yeah, I know about these anglerfish. Glow to attract other players yeah, look, they're cool, but I mean, I know about them, so Both are so severely is. lacking in mobility and rely on their trap in order to get their targets within the striking range, <laughs> but make up for it with their ridiculously high damage bite attack. This can be a double-edged sword, though, since if a more powerful player is nearby, you're still giving away your location. A few other niche uses can be to use light as a distraction, almost like throwing a flashbang or a flare, somewhat similar to the octopus's smokescreen ability. The other most important thing to know about smoke the abyss screen or, uh, is how to survive in a problems. server centered not around plants and herbivores, funny, funny. but around scavengers. Without light, no loot actually spawns down there, at least not in the form of plants. Luckily, there's no better area in the game to be a scavenger, because every elimination from the open ocean server leaves behind loot that falls to the abyssal seafloor. When a whale player gets defeated, it can Oof. turn the ocean floor into a year-long party feast. where players that would normally be enemies come to enjoy the event together. One major player that tends to show up at these but is rarely seen anywhere else is the Sleeper Shark, a build Sleeper which admittedly shark. I should have included in my shark video. 
Sleeper Sharks have the lowest mobility of any shark. Instead of having chosen to put their points into resistances, like pressure resistance, acid resistance, and temperature resistance. And unlike certain other extremophiles, these perks actually come in handy at the bottom of the ocean, especially near vents and volcanoes. Apparently this build has a great matchup against the colossal squid. Sleeper sharks even appear to target the biggest species of large squid, the colossal squid, which is about double the size of the shark. The huge sperm whale was previously the only animal thought to rely on giant and colossal squid for food. Okay, it's the slowest shark, but it targets something. I, I, what? How? Well, because neither the colossal squid nor sleeper shark have ever attended a major tournament. Uh, Most players, myself included, it. have yet to see how on earth sleeper so sharks don't know can win shit that about them. This is fucking, this is scary as hell. Like, it is 2020, the end of 2020. And like, there's animals that we don't know shit about. Considering all the technology we have nowadays. It's fucking weird. It should not be like this, should it? Like, like the fucking Amazon. How we don't know shit? 2020, brother. We should be able to, if we can nuke it, we should know it, okay? Uh, that, I, uh, that's what I think. The last thing I want to highlight is the unmatched success. <laughs> Probably not the way to think about things. It's found a way to tap into an infinite source of XP by making great use of the heat resistance perk. Oh, I've seen it in a hand that once. uncontested control over one of the game's resources. Even sleeper sharks can't handle that level of heat. So these players can basically just farm as much XP as they want. Mm. Now, if someone were to come up with a predator build that could resist the heat of the hydrothermal vent and also be powerful enough to pierce the armor of the tube worm, they could potentially get a really high score very quickly. But so far, it's never been done, and so for now, two worms pretty much rule the abyss. Two worms. Now, one last thing you might notice is that none of these builds have any hair. Is this because mammals can't really survive in the abyss? Maybe. But it's also possible that the abyssal community happens to be okay. huge fans of Dollar Shave Club. Okay, I thought I was gonna say some cool shit. Come on, Tirzu. Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to help you look and feel your best. Like toothpaste, body wash, and hairstyle. By the way, do y'all still shave like this? Like, uh, I only use like my electrical shit. Like, it doesn't take off the small hairs, but I'm done in like two seconds and I don't feel itchy at all after that shit. But then again, I don't really grow a beard. Like, yeah, I don't know. So yeah, let's see what it is. I doubt he's gonna say any more cool shit about animals, right? from facts in motion especially to my no it's not it was a pretty cool video i wish he went in deeper and that's what she said hey anyway like comment subscribe and i'll see you next time but have a nice fucking day <laughs>